Hey, have you seen my handy? I want to ask my friend if he's wearing a smoking tonight or if he wants to dress up in partner look. What? You only understood half of what I just said? Well, then you're definitely not German. <laughs> Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia, I was born and raised in Munich, Germany, but I have been living off and on in Cincinnati, Ohio since 2016. So I hope all of you guys are staying safe and healthy during this crisis and I hope you're staying home if you can. This is definitely a difficult time for all of us all around the world and I'm sure we could all use some distraction and entertainment. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about something light and fun. Many of you know this and I've mentioned it before, Germany is a pretty Americanized or anglicized country overall. We listen to a lot of American and other English-speaking music, we watch American shows and movies and almost all Germans speak at least some basic English. But did you guys also know that English has slowly become part of the German language over time? There are actually so many English words that we just naturally use when speaking German that it will probably take hours to name them all. A lot of this had to do with the progress in technology in the past few decades, so a lot of these English technology terms were just adapted into the German language, like downloaden, computer, upgraden, scroll, just to name a few. And as you could probably tell from what I just said, a lot of those words have also been adapted grammatically into the German language. So an English verb like to download gets the regular German verb ending and we say downloaden and then it's also being conjugated like a regular German verb. And it's the same with English adjectives that we use in German. Those two are usually being declined the German way and English nouns that we adapted to the German language get a German article. So it's der Computer, for example. But what many of us Germans don't know is that a lot of those English words that have become a normal part of our everyday vocabulary are actually used in a whole different way in German. And if we use those words towards an English native speaker, they will probably not be able to understand us. And believe me, it's really tricky not to use those words in English, even if you're aware of this, because you're already speaking English and you have those English words in your head and it's just hard to remember that you can't use them the same way that you're used to in your first language. So for today's video, I've prepared a list of 20 English words that Germans use wrong. But before I start with the whole list, I'd like to mention a few English words that are or used to be part of the German youth language. The most common one is definitely cool. This one has been part of the German language for a few decades now and we don't use it in the sense of something is cold, but only in the sense of something is hip, something is great. But as I said, it's been around for a very long time. So today, almost all generations use this word and we actually use it all the time. A couple terms that were part of the youth language when my parents were young that my generation doesn't use a whole lot anymore are heavy or too much. Heavy is mostly used when something is emotionally or mentally heavy and too much is used for when something is overwhelming or over the top. So a German may say something like, der Film war ganz schön heavy or das Outfit von Lady Gaga war ein bisschen too much. Meaning that movie was pretty heavy and Lady Gaga's outfit was a little too much. Now going more into the slang of the past few years, you'll hear a lot of younger people use the word nice in German all the time. And we don't use it as a synonym for pretty, but as a synonym for cool, sweet, awesome. So when I tell my friends some good news, they may just reply with nice. Or a German may say something like nice as auto, for when someone has a new car. Here you can see how the adjective has been declined, by the way. We don't say nice auto, we say nicest auto. So these English words that I just mentioned aren't exactly used wrong in German, but through people using them over and over again, they kind of get their own connotation in the German language. But my favorite English slang term in German of the past few years has been safe because that one is actually used completely wrong in German and a lot of Germans therefore also use it wrong when speaking English. So when a German says, ich komme safe zu deiner Party, it doesn't mean I'm going to come to your party safely, but it means I'm definitely coming to your party. So Germans use it as a synonym for definitely or for sure. Another example would be something like, bist du dir sicher, dass man hier parken kann? Are you sure that we're allowed to park here? Yeah, safe. 
Yes, absolutely, for sure. So with that little detour to English words in German slang language, here is my list of 20 English words that have a whole different meaning in German. And when I first introduce the words, I'm going to pronounce them the way that we do it in German. Number one, Handy. This one absolutely had to be the first one on my list because we use this word almost every single day in German. Handy is what Germans call their cell phone or mobile phone. In English, handy is when something is practical or handy can also be something sexual. Number two, photo shooting. No, there are no guns involved here. Photo shooting to Germans is simply a photo shoot. Number three, casting. Germans don't use this word entirely wrong, but I found that the word casting isn't as common in the US as it is in Germany because Americans usually use the word audition instead. And Germans also use this word to describe reality competition shows like American Idol or The Voice. To us, those are casting shows. Number four, partner look. I've definitely used this one in English before, even though I knew in the back of my head that nobody would know what I'm trying to say, but my mouth was just faster than my brain because it's just such a practical term. Partner look to Germans is when two people are wearing the same outfit, and there isn't actually a good translation for this in English, but you can say something like, those people are twins, they're twinning, or they're wearing twinning outfits. Number five, public viewing. This is a term that a lot of Germans think is totally misunderstood by English native speakers, but it's actually not as bad as many of us think. Public viewing in German refers to the public screening of a sporting event, usually soccer, like the World Cup or the European Cup, but it can also be some other kind of sporting event like the Olympics. Public viewings often take place in restaurants, beer gardens, outdoor movie theaters, stadiums, and other places, often outdoors, but not always. Public viewing in English has different meanings, but one of those meanings that's especially common in American English is the public laying out of a dead body, Aufbarung in German. But that's not the only meaning of public viewing. It can also be used for when something is shown to the public for the first time, like a picture, or when something that's usually private and closed is opened to the public temporarily, kind of like an open house. I actually used this term in my video on sports culture in Germany and the US because I knew most of you guys would know what I mean. And since I was talking about Germany, I thought I should also use the term that we actually use there. But I did get a few comments, I think mostly from Germans, asking if I was aware that public viewing to English native speakers has to do with dead bodies. So be assured it's not the end of the the world to use this term in English. Number six, drive in. This isn't necessarily used wrong in German, it's just used differently. Drive in is what Germans call a drive through. So it's not the McDonald's drive through, but the McDonald's drive in. We don't have those nearly as often as you guys do in the US, but they do exist in Germany. And I think the reason why we call them differently is that a lot of Germans struggle with the word through, because a lot of Germans can't say the TH, and then also the English R is kind of tricky to say, and then both right behind each other through can be really tricky for Germans. So we just call it drive in, way easier. And it also works because we don't use the word drive in for outdoor movie theaters where you drive to with your car, we call those Autokino in German, car cinema. Number seven, shooting star. In English, this stands for a glowing meteorite, a Sternschnuppe in German. In Germany, we use this term for someone who became a star overnight, like a rising star or a high flyer. Number eight, makeup. This can be used the same way it is in English for basically everything that mostly women put into their faces to look prettier, but a lot of Germans also use it as a synonym for just foundation. That's how I learned it when I was young, that makeup equals foundation, but I think partly because of all those beauty YouTube channels, the word foundation has become more common in German too. Number nine, peeling. Another beauty-related word, and this one can be really confusing because it's used as a noun in German, and when used as a noun in English, it usually refers to like the peeling of an orange, for example, schale. In Germany, a peeling is something that you use for your face or your body. It's a facial or a body scrub, probably because you're peeling off dead skin, I'm assuming. So if you're looking for a face scrub in a German store, make sure that you look for the word peeling. Number 10, 
smoking. Smoking in German is not used as a verb for when someone smokes cigarettes, but it's actually used as a noun for something that men wear when they formally dress up. So it's what English native speakers call a tuxedo or a dinner jacket. Number 11, mixer. This word is kind of confusing because it does stand for a kitchen device in both English and German, but in German it means blender, whereas in English it stands for this thing right here that you use, for example, when you mix cake dough or something, Rührgerät in German. Also, where I live, I think that if I use the word mixer and I'm not currently in the kitchen, a lot of people will also assume that I'm talking about a social gathering or a party, or that I'm talking about a beverage that you mix your alcoholic drink with, like orange juice or Coke can be a mixer, for example. Number 12, Oldtimer. A German will immediately think of cars when hearing this word, because to us, an oldtimer is a classic or a vintage car. In English, this just refers to an older person. Number 13, Kata. To Germans, a Kata is a pretty important person that's involved in a film production, the one that cuts all the material. In English, you would say film editor. Germans call the process either cutten or the German equivalent schneiden, and the person responsible for it is the cutter. In English, a cutter can have a lot of different meanings, but it usually refers to either a device or a person that cuts things. Number 14, body bag. This one is a very popular one when it comes to wrong anglicisms in German. To Germans, a body bag is a bag that you wear closely to your body, a messenger bag. In English, a body bag is a bag that goes around a body, a dead body to be precise. It's what we call Leichensack in German. Number 15, Timer. In English, a timer is either a device or an app that you use to time something, an alarm that goes off in exactly two minutes, for example. This is mostly used in the kitchen for cooking and it's what Germans traditionally call Eieruhr, egg clock. For Germans, on the other hand, a timer oftentimes refers to an item that they carry with them and that they put all of their plans and appointments in, a day planner. Number 16, Patchwork Familie. A patchwork family is a term that refers to a non-traditional family in German. So for example, when two partners get into a new relationship and they both bring kids into the relationship from previous relationships with different partners, then they all come together and form a new family, a patchwork family. Number 17, shopping. This one seems pretty simple and doesn't leave a whole lot of room for misunderstandings. And in both English and German, it does refer to the process of purchasing something. But in English, it really means buying anything like grocery shopping or when you buy cleaning supplies, etc. Whereas in German, it really only refers to buying clothes. So when a German teenager says, ich will shoppen gehen, they mean that they want to go to the mall and get new clothes. Number 18, Neckholder. Okay, so this one I actually wasn't aware of myself. I only stumbled upon this for this video. So there's a good chance that I've already used this in the past towards Americans. So I'm really sorry for the confusion. A neck holder, bikini or bra or top in German stands for a piece of clothing with a halter neck. So instead of having regular straps, it goes around your neck. Number 19, Bima. This one is one of my favorites. For Germans, a beamer is something that we actually use quite a lot, like in the classroom or at the movie theater, because it typically stands for a projector. In English, I don't actually hear the word beamer a lot, but apparently it is kind of like a slang term for a BMW car. Who knew? And to Germans, a beamer can also be a transporter, so like a device like they have it in Star Trek, so something that beams you from one place to another. Number 20, box. Last but not least, this is one of the most common mistakes Germans make because it is a very common word in both German and English. And while speaking English, it's so easy to forget that it has a whole different meaning in English. Box is what Germans call a speaker. So I may ask my friends something like, hat jemand von euch Boxen, die ich mir fürs Wochenende leihen kann? Does one of you have speakers I could borrow for the weekend? To English native speakers, a box is just a box. Eine Schachtel or ein Karton. And actually Germans use it in that sense sometimes too. 
So this was my list of 20 English words that Germans use wrong or that have a whole different meaning in German. So which one surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments below. And obviously there are many, many more of those words. So feel free to also share your favorite word of those that is used wrong in German or maybe the other way around, a German word that is used wrong in English. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for free if you like what I do on here. Also, activate the bell to get video notifications. Follow me on Instagram and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!